Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So actually you can see something in the background already and I'm really excited to start a different project or let's say a project that reminds me of the beginnings of my YouTube channel because I really really wanted to just make something without really a pattern, without <laughs> some sort of idea, just like going out there and make something, craft something. And of course I have an idea of what I want to make. I know that I want to make a bodice, like a corset-like one. I want to use some really, really elegant beaded fabric and I want to upcycle a dress. So I have my dress already here that I want to upcycle, which is a dress that I got on sale off of ASOS. And it's this really, really cute bodycon baby blue dress right here that looks like this. So it has this small cutout right there and then very elegant, but it is elastic as you can see right here. So that's where my dress form ends and you can see how it's like going um, around the bust and then whoop, goes in where there is no dress form underneath anymore. So that's a problem that I will have to find a solution for, that I will have to face. And I already have like some sort of idea. Now I'm going to show you a small sketch that I already made to somewhat guide me through this process, which looks something like this. So you can see there, there is a really delicate bodice part right here and then a very flowy full length skirt. Now these waves are just the fabric. This is the fabric that I'm going to use. So it's this really, really nice sparkly beaded uh, fabric. I don't know what composition it is. I bet that it's synthetic. And then I have these other fabrics that I might use. I actually don't really know if I want to use something that is skin colored, maybe for the bodice in the middle right here. I'm not sure yet, but that's just an uh, just as an idea. And then I have this very stiff tool, which I might use either for the hem right here. So I would put like some ruffles in there or for like a tall underskirt, I would say. I'm not sure yet, but these are just ideas. And I think I'm just gonna start draping <laughs> or start like something, I guess. Let's see where this goes. <laughs>
By the way, I decided to baste all of my uh, lines that I drew onto the bodice onto a tulle kind of fabric because I had an easier time working on the bodice of the already pre-fabricated dress that I put on my dress form and working out the lines of the bodice that I wanted to have and then just transferring it with the basting stitches that I did onto the transparent fabric so I can see through. And then I just put it onto a sheet of paper and drew out the lines and measured everything and you were good to go. This is by the way what happens if I start working on my desk. <laughs> she just hops on, sits down, <laughs> and just like, yeah, does cat things, right? You cutie! So after I was done with making the mock-up of my patterns that I just draped onto my bodice, I decided that I wanted the net cut out in the front a tiny bit more narrow because it just felt like a huge portion of the bodice and I didn't really like that. So I actually went in one and a half centimeters on both sides and then also narrowed it down in the middle at around one centimeter. I cut out all of the pattern pieces out of the tool I later on saw that I did not have to cut out the cup part because it's gonna get the blue background that the dress has that I'm working on basically. So minus that, but I already cut out everything out of the tool and now I'm going to cut out everything out of my beautiful beaded fashion fabric. It has these kind of wavy patterns on it. So I decided that my grain line is actually gonna be a 90 degrees turned just because the pattern worked better that way on the bodice so that the line's gonna go vertically down and not horizontally around your body. I just like that better. That's why I went with that option. I just cut out everything and then I was ready to Oh yeah, and I totally forgot <laughs> over the years that I have not worked with a fabric like that. How much stuff actually falls off of this fabric. <laughs> so beware if you happen to work with any kind of beaded fabric or sequins like I am working with. There is going to be a lot of fallout and you're going to have to tidy up every time that you cut something, that you sew something, anytime. They're just going to fall off randomly. And now onto the most agonizing part of this project, cutting my dress in half, because the bodice is gonna get my bodice that I'm making out of this beautiful fabric. And I needed the upper fabric for the cup part, so I had to cut off the bodice of the blue dress to cut out the cup parts and to, you know, have some non-transparent stuff around the, the boob area. And that's very scary to me all the time. So <laughs> be very, very sure of what you're doing before you do something like this, because it can very well also be the end of a project. I'm not talking out of experience for sure. <laughs> it got a bit messy with the pattern pieces that I needed to cut out. And the hood part of the cup was just barely small enough to be cut out of uh, the bodice without having any seam in the middle. So I managed to do that somehow, but in any case, the fabric, the blue fabric would have been elastic. So it would have not been too big of a deal. Nevertheless, I wanted the cup parts of the blue fabric to be in a non-stretched position while cutting out so that everything is laying relaxed. But anyways, I'm treating the elastic fabric as if it were non-elastic. I also went ahead and made a bit more of a detailed sketch of the bodice so I could see where my boning is going to end up being or what position of the boning made a very nice shape. So that's what you were able to see there. And I went ahead and put some notches in my bodice pieces. So while sewing, I was able to know where to put the boning into the bodice. I started off with basting all the pieces together so I was able to work with one layer of every pattern piece and put the cup parts 
together. So I first closed the vertical cup seam in the two triangular shaped cup pieces and then I added the cup hood, so the horizontal seam, before ironing everything nicely. To stabilize everything, I am using my trusty Rigeline boning as usual, which is a stitchable boning, so there's no need to make any tunnels or any encasing or something like that. You can still do that and I will do that as well just for aesthetic purposes, but generally I recommend this boning for all your projects as it's so cool just be able to stitch it on. For the cups I am putting a horizontal boning line in the cup hood seam which I am using as a tunnel already basically and I'm making sure to stitch very closely to the ditch that I just sewed and then stop stitching another time about five millimeters next to it to fix the boning into place. Now that the cups are done, I'm working on the front and side front pieces. So I also have to baste the two layers together. And once that is done, I can continue to put boning into place because we're going to have to put some boning before we put all of the pieces of the bodice together because some boning tunnels are actually going to end in the seams, in some vertical seams, which you can see right there. So I'm using some bias tape, some white bias tape which just looks really neat and also because of its elasticity as it is cut on the bias it's really really easy to handle on a bodice like this. So just in order for you to be able to understand it more easily, I am putting these kind of diagrams on the screen for every step of uh, the bodice sewing, I guess. All of the uh, red lines are boning channels and all of the blue lines are seams and the order in which you have to sew everything is written down in numbers. So after I put the two bonings that you can see right here into place, I closed the front dividing seam and added this longer kind of bent boning over both of the pattern pieces in one go. It just goes over everything basically, which is a very, very nice line, which I think is very flattering in this case. Next up, I am putting the cups onto the bodice, which is this very curved line. And it's kind of tricky to match both pieces together, but I am using the front dividing seam, which just matches up with the vertical cup seam. You can use, if you want to, some tool to kind of help you put the fabric in place because it is curved like in the opposite ways. And therefore you have to kind of bunch up the fabric for the cups. At least I had to do that, especially with the fabric also being elastic. So that's one tip that I can give you. After that, I'm ironing all of the seam allowances into the cup for it to be neatly tucked away. And in my opinion, it already looks so, so nice. I can't wait to show you the end result of the bodice. I felt like I needed one last boning line in the middle just for aesthetic reasons. So I went for a vertical line, which just goes straight down from where the straps will be attached. So in the corner of the cup, 
all the way down to the waistline and this actually really really tied everything together and I'm so so happy that I did that. This can be a bit tricky for people with a bit more chest but for me this was perfect because it also stabilized the cups, it made it look really really nicely and I'm all in all really really happy with the end result so far. Once I had both sides of the bodice done, I continued to put the lace center in between both of the sides to tie everything together. That's just a normal stitch down the dividing seam right there. And I also went ahead and put some boning into that seam as well. You're gonna see it in a bit. Before that though, I'm ironing the seam allowances away from the lacing because we don't want any seam allowance to peek through the transparency of the netting. You can use the seam allowance as a tunnel as well. I opted for putting my bare Rigeline boning onto the seam allowance just for the boning not to be visible from the outside. So that was the main focus as all of these seams are transparent and my Rigeline boning is white. I opted for the boning to sit on the most inner side that I could put it just for it not to be visible from the outside. So as you can see here, that's when a stitchable boning comes in handy very much. And that's what the bodice looks like so far. And once done with both front sides, I continued to put the back pieces onto the front. So I'm basically closing the side seams. First with a normal seam and then I'm strengthening that seam with another set of Rigeline boning strips, which I'm just putting on the wrong side of the fabric, sewing over top of the seam allowance that I cut down to around five millimeters. So on the outside, you're gonna see two rows of top stitching basically. Continuing on with some structural pieces, these boning strips are getting attached onto the bodice via top stitching. Uh, following this diagram, so I'm doing number 9, 10 and 11, and these are just helping to prevent any wrinkles while wearing. So on the sides, you'd basically put them just the opposite side of where wrinkles form, and that's avoiding the wrinkles. We're getting pretty close to the end. The next step that I'm doing is cutting out the straps for the sleeves. Normally you would cut them out in one piece, but my I just had scrap fabric of my netting laying around, so I used that one to just save a little bit of fabric and I cut out two sets of 40 centimeters long, two and a half centimeters wide strips that I'm just gonna turn inside out with my trusty method of putting some yarn in between the uh, layers and then just top stitching the long sides close and then when you just pull on the yarn you can simply turn over this whole narrow piece best method actually that i have ever tried and it works out every time you just simply need to cut off the yarn and then just peel out the small little knot that you'd made and then you're good to go The shoulder straps get attached at the corners of the cups and then also the corners of the back pieces, the two obvious spots, and I ironed them beforehand so that the seam is, or the ditch of the seam is only visible on one side, which is going to be the wrong side, so the side that's facing your skin while wearing. So make sure to pin it accordingly onto the bodice. And then after just bar tacking them on, it's time 
for the lining. So initially I planned the, for the bodice no lining at all, but then after I decided to put some Rigeline boning afterwards, like for strength, just onto the wrong side of the bodice. So I basically just have bare Rigeline boning, which would touch my skin and rub against my skin, which would be very uncomfortable. I decided to make another layer of lining. And I opted for the netting because the bodice is see-through, so it would make no sense to use any other material than the netting that I already used for the see-through parts. And just to make it easier, I also made the cups all out of the netting. So there's not gonna be any material that's making the cups thicker or anything like that. But that also meant that you're gonna see all of the seam allowances and the ones particularly in the cups. So the vertical and the horizontal ones were very ugly. So I decided to just hand sew some bias tape strips onto the seam allowances to hide it, which was very, you know, peaceful. Yeah, I just put some YouTube on and uh, gave it a go and it was really, really nice to get back to hand sewing. So very, very, relaxed. I didn't do anything special, I just whip stitched the strips on and making sure not to, you know, peek through the outside. So very easy, nothing special, just to hide the seam allowances because the next step is going to be putting the see-through lining onto the bodice. So I'm putting right sides together of the lining and of the bodice, just pinning it together and there is nothing really that you have to look out for apart from the cutout or the netting part in the very center front. So I'm leaving that open for now. I'm sewing all of the other parts together apart from the center front piece, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second. I'm trying to catch my straps as neatly as possible. That's why I'm like trying to use my pins to help me put the straps where I want them to be because I had some issues with another dress, the green velvet dress that I made a couple of weeks ago where I turned over the whole piece and then the straps ripped. I'm just trying to have like a 90 degree angled seam right there to have no issues after turning it around. Speaking of which, you can see me right here top stitching the whole neckline of the bodice after turning everything around. And if you remember the graphic that I put up for the guide for where to put boning, there actually is a boning underneath the arm. So I'm referring to in the picture, you can see it number 11. And that is just making it so easy to tuck away the lining onto the lining side so that it's not gonna be visible on the outer side. And now here you can see me only top stitching the seam allowance to the inside of the bodice because the center front where the netting is, is still open, right? And now I am closing it just by top stitching it, which gives the bodice this really neat finish on the inside. Well, who would have thought that that dress is gonna turn into something like this? I for sure did not think that it would work out that well. Like, I know what I can do, but I was not sure if this project is gonna work out in the end. I mean, it's not finished yet. For the video that I just showed you, I basically just pinned the bodice onto the skirt piece, which I will be using as an underskirt kind of thing. So I will use it in the end, but it's not gonna look like this kind of cocktail dress that I showed you in the very end. But I'm so, so happy, like it already looks amazing. I am this close to just leaving it as it is and just using it as a cocktail dress. But then on the other hand, I really, really, really want to do like a big skirt and a big princess dress out of it because I still have so much of this beautiful sequence fabric that I can't wait to use in the combination of the thicker, sturdier tool. So keep an eye out for that. I'm so, so, so excited. I don't know when part two is gonna come out. I am planning to do it right after this, maybe the second video after this. So just 
be sure to click the subscribe button to not miss it once I upload it. I will be uploading every Sunday, of course, as usual, another project. So also, if it's not going to be part two, it's going to be something really, really cool, I can assure you. So make sure to click the subscribe button and ring the bell so you're not going to miss out on any videos that I will be uploading. As I just said, I post on Sundays, so keep an eye out for that. If you haven't already, please follow me on my Instagram. I am uh, giving you a lot of behind the scenes of my work and everything related to that and also my personal life and my cat. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So give me a follow right there. It is the same handle as here on my YouTube, on TikTok and on Instagram. So I'll see you there, I guess. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment down below with your thoughts on how the bodice looks like and if I should actually make a princess dress out of it or if I should just leave it like this. I will make a princess dress out of it nevertheless, but let me know your opinion. I'm so, so excited to read your thoughts on this project because I have shared a lot of times already that I wanted to do something like this again and I finally it sparked up here and I had an idea and I just went for it. So really excited for that. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys!